Good morning, everyone. So today we will uh, start a uh, continuity from last class from transmission system itself. So till now we finished about uh, clutches, uh, different types of clutches, then gearbox, manual or automatic gear shifting mechanism, then uh, driving system of the gear that is overdrive or a fluid flywheel or torque converter. So this main portions we covered till now. Now last portion of this uh, transmission system that is uh, propeller shafts. Uh, how we are going to transmit the power from uh, gearbox to wheels. Uh, so now till transmission is over. Now from transmission to wheel. How we are going to supply the power. Uh, how we will uh, convert that torque from uh, transmission to wheel. So that part is uh, remaining. So in that uh, we will come so uh, propeller shaft, inertial joint, then differential rear axle. In the axle we have the two types of uh, drives. So many are there, but in this uh, two very important things are positive drive and uh, torque drive. So we will study this much portion and we will complete the transmission system of this module. Then we will have the brake system. So whenever you talk about a uh, propeller shaft, it is also called as a uh, drive shaft. So if you consider the front wheel, uh, means uh, front engine, rear wheel drive uh, automobiles. Uh, so power is produced in the front, that is uh, engine is kept at the front, but uh, you are giving the drive to the rear wheels. Uh, so there should be some means to transfer of uh, power from uh, engine that is from transmission box to the rear wheels. So we need several uh, components uh, over there while transmitting from uh, front side to rear wheel uh, drive. So in one among them is a uh, propeller shaft. So after a transmission box, after a transmission box, we need from pro uh, shaft that is called as propeller shaft to transmit the power from transmission box to the rear wheels. So this propeller shaft can be joined by uh, universal joints uh, from the transmission shaft to the propeller shaft so that uh, because uh, where the roads uh, we can't expect uh, uh, evenly surfaced roads. So sometimes uh, there might be angular uh, deformation may take place. So transmission is fixed to your uh, uh, engine chassis, whereas uh, uh, rear uh, this uh, differential is there no in the rear side that is fixed to again it is chassis. But here uh, propeller shaft it won't be fixed to any places. So there should be any gap or clearance should be there whenever there is a road surface is not uneven or uh, whenever the turn is there. So it has to bend or it has to give the length of the driving shop should be reduced or sometimes it might be increased. So there should be some kind of joint is needed because if you are not providing the joint uh, whenever the turning takes place uh, or whenever the ups and downs in the roads are there. So there will be bending stress or torsional stress. So that will be there. So if you that uh, shaft is uh, um, going under that kind of stresses, bending stresses or torsional stresses, uh, what will happen? Your propeller shaft may be break down. So to avoid that one, we will provide the some uh, kind of uh, joints or sometimes we will make a propeller shaft should be made tubular shape so that uh, it can drive or it can transmit the power very easily. So one or two universal joints uh, we can permit so that uh, it can allow that variation of uh, angle of uh, drive. So this figure will show the shaft. So we can see over here propeller shaft. So this one is your uh, transmission uh, system uh, shaft will be there from the transmission system shaft it will goes to the universal joint from the universal joint uh, one sliding joint will be there so this sliding joint uh, is formed internal splines on the sleeve attached to the left uh, sleeve attached to the left universal joint and uh, this uh, sliding member also will have the external uh, splines to join 
propeller shaft so it will have internal teeth over here in the universal joint side whereas external teeth to join the propeller shaft so in this way this sliding joint will be there so then universal joint over here it will be there and uh, another side also universal joint will be there so depending upon type of drive used in the axle uh, axle so you may require either one universal joint or two universal joint depending upon the type of drive where you are going to use in the rear axle so this is how a uh, propeller shaft works or it will transmit the power from your uh, transmission box to the differential remember the propeller shaft it transmits the power from your transmission box to the differential from the differential it will go to the axle axle to wheels so, so this is how your transmission of power will take place so, so from the differential axle axle to the wheels so from transmission box to propeller shaft then the propeller shaft to differential differential to the rear axle rear axle to the wheel so this is how uh, uh, work and this slip joint, joint or uh, whatever the sliding joint uh, it serves to adjust the effective length so whenever the turning takes place so to adjust the effective length of the propeller shaft the sliding joints are used so whenever there is a movement of the rear axle depending upon turning condition uh, or any other condition so to adjust this length uh, the sliding joints are used so sliding joints so it may go propeller shaft may go inside this the spline so provided so that uh, effective length uh, it may increase or decrease depending upon the condition types so we can check uh, that uh, diagram also see over here the propeller length shaft it is increased over here and over here it is decreased so up to a particular angle or uh, optical uh, turn so this length may increase so depending upon the type of condition so this uh, propeller shaft or sliding joint provides uh, since external splines are provided so there will be moment of this uh, shaft over the spline since the transmission will be there so your length exactly length may increase sometimes so uh, what will happen depending upon the uh, radius required that uh, shaft may go inside or uh, your uh, effective length might be decreased or uh, propeller shaft length might be decreased so in this way because uh, your uh, turning will take place so differential will be on the this side whereas it is going inside so the effective length uh, might be decreased so you should provide the propeller shaft should provide uh, depending upon the con uh, condition whether the length of that uh, shaft should increase or decrease uh, whenever the conditions required so exactly can uh, see how we can transmit the power here the transmission box from the transmission box uh, we have the output shaft of the transmission box from that uh, universal joint will be there from the universal joint uh, through the sliding uh, joint it is going to the propeller shaft from the propeller shaft uh, again uh, here uh, we are not given the universal joint uh, just a uh, sliding joint will be there so that is going to the differential that is uh, in the differential we will call it as pinion shaft from the pinion shaft uh, it will go to the rear axle rear axle to the wheels so main function of differential is so one is to transmit the right angle power transmission uh, as well as uh, whenever the turning is provided the differential should give the proper speed for the both the wheels uh -huh. so that we'll discuss in the later stage so after this uh, we will have the universal joint so what are the function has to do this universal joint how it will be exactly universal joint as already you have gone across in uh, camd i guess uh, camd already have drawn this uh, type of universal joint uh, assembly so again we will go through this in universal joint very brief manner so universal joint uh, so it is known that we know that uh, solid drive line solid drive line means uh, the same speed engine speed itself while uh, driving so that means a maximum speed whenever you are driving so your uh, shaft may bend because it will have so much of uh, torsional loads uh, will be available so 
to avoid that one to bending of your propeller shaft to avoid that one a flexible joint is provided flexible joint is provided so that joint is known as universal joint between your uh, transmission shaft and uh, propeller shaft so that flexible joint uh, transmit your torque uh, even though rear axle is moving up and down so function of this uh, joints might be depending upon the turning required or turning uh, whenever the vehicle turns uh, turning take place or differential move together up and down so whenever the differential moving up and down so your propeller shaft also should uh, uh, give the effective length so there also you should know the universal joint and one more thing is whenever the solid drive that means whenever you are running at the maximum speed it may have a lot of uh, torsional loads on the profession, uh, propeller shaft ends uh, to avoid that one bending of that uh, uh, propeller shaft we need that uh, universal joint universal joint is like uh, flexible connection between the two rigid shaft so it will give that flexibility for the shaft so that it won't encounter any kind of uh, bending uh, on the shaft so in automobile uh, what will happen in automobile uh, universal joint are used not only transmit the power from uh, output shaft that is transmission shaft to the propeller shaft which is at an angle but also changes this angle due to movement of uh, rear axle up and down due to irregularities of the road so the main uh, function not only to transfer the power whenever the road condition provides some kind of uh, irregularities uh, it has to adjust for that irregularity so, so that is also function of your uh, universal joint so these uh, devices uh, power transmission uh, without these devices so power transmission is uh, not at all possible so we will go through the how the diagram uh, look likes for uh, universal joints uh, you know that one but still we will go through that one so this uh, we can see over here universal joint how it will look like sir so more simple type of universal joint that is uh, hooks joint we will call so these are the hooks joint we will call so it is the simple and compact in uh, construction uh, and very efficient uh, whenever the small angular if the angular moment is uh, less than 20 degree then uh, this will be very efficient type of joints uh, where we can transmit the power so it consists of uh, two y-shaped yoke you can see over here this is called as yoke so which will be y-shaped so here one y-shape yoke here one y-shape yoke so we will call it as uh, this one is uh, uh, from the shaft a xx uh, yoke and uh, here it is called as y yoke so we will have the driving uh, shaft a and uh, driven shaft b connected to this yoke of the universal joint uh, whose axis are inclined to each other see axis of the shaft will be like this and axis of the shaft will be like this so these two shaft axis will be inclined to each other the spider or we'll call it as the cross cross consists of four four arms one two three four two in x direction and two in the y direction supported by the yoke two yokes that is one is a y y yoke and one is the x x yoke so thus whenever the shaft uh, a having the angular motion because uh, rotational motion which is coming from the transmission system which will uh, rotate about uh, x x axis uh, causes uh, rotation of uh, this yoke through this axis for this shaft at an angle so here alpha is the angle so through this angle this shaft also will rotate so this shaft is nothing but your propeller shaft so in this way your uh, inertial uh, joint will uh, works uh, uh, 
the driven shaft speed whatever the driven shaft will the speed it does not uh, remains constant or uniform so it will depends uh, whenever the inclination is there whenever the inclination is there with respect to this one to this one the driven speed will fluctuate so zero fluctuation is obtained whenever the angle is zero got it so whenever the inclination is given there may not be an equal speed will be there or fluctuation will be there so to achieve this uniform or driven shaft speed we have to use the two universal shafts so one is uh, this universal shaft one more you have to use uh, on the other end whenever you use two universal shaft then uh, we will we can achieve the uniform uh, speed between the driven and driving shaft so otherwise so fluctuation will be there depending upon the angle of inclination this is how your universal shaft will works see here we can see some times we have the inclination over here so whenever the inclination is there that is uh, whenever uh, we are turning take place uh, during that time you may encounter this kind of uh, inclination or in the straight road we may not able to get this uh, inclination but whenever the turning take place uh, you may encounter this kind of uh, inclination so that uh, uniform uh, distribution of uh, speed won't be there there might be a fluctuation over the shaft so we should avoid that one as much as possible next uh, we will move on to the rear axle axle or we will call it as back action the propeller shaft uh, takes the drive from transmit and it will transmit to differential from where power is uh, going from the driving wheels to the rear axle uh, in this uh, we have a dead axle or lie axle so dead axle means uh, which carry it uh, carries only the vehicle load but it does not transmit the power to the wheels whereas live axle it carries the weight also and it will also drives the wheel so that is a function of a live axle so rear axle is kind of a live axle the function of a live or rear or back axle that is the first one so remember the function it act as a beam upon the ends of which roads we road wheels are can revolve and through which weight of the body and load can be transmitted via springs and road wheels to the ground so it will act as a one beam this rear axle live axle so where it will uh, takes the load as well as the wheels will revolve through which uh, weight of the body can be transmitted to the ground through springs that means suspension we will have leaf spring might be there or might be shock absorption so through that it will transfer that weight to the ground so that is the main function of one uh, rear axle the second function is uh, it act as a housing to support the final drive so the differential and shaft and transmit the drive to the road so it will entirely it will act as a housing for your uh, drive dif differential and shaft and it will transmit the drive to the road wheel this is the second function of your uh, rear action so how the diagram uh, we will check that so so this figure will show the rear action whenever the engine is at front and uh, drive is at the back the pinion shaft we can see over here this is the pinion shaft is supported with respect to bearings uh, in axle casing and takes the drive from the propeller shaft whatever is there from propeller from the front engine from the transmission box it goes to the propeller from the propeller it comes to the your pinion shaft from pinion shaft uh, we will have the pinion gears so then it will uh, going to the crown wheel or uh, which is mounted on your rear axle so it will goes to the crown wheel from the crown wheel it is going to the shaft so that is the rear axle shaft so on the end of the rear axle shaft wheels are mounted so in this way your uh, power wheel goes to the 
V. So this is how uh, power will transmit. Uh, so this uh, together uh, assembly it is called as differential. Remember. So in the differential, uh, it is going to the drive wheels. Uh, so here in the picture we have uh, uh, shown only single shaft, uh, but usually we will use two half shaft. One is this side. One is the other side of the wheel. So one this side of the wheel. One more is the this side of the wheel. So usually we will use two half shaft, not only one. So one is having the problem. So two half shaft we will use that will transmit the power to this wheel, and another half will power to this wheel. So this is how your uh, rear axle uh, transmit the power. Whenever the rear axle uh, is present that uh, encounters uh, so many forces uh, or so many talks one is uh, remember first one is the talk reaction it may encounter so so in this uh, diagram you can check uh, propeller shaft applies torque on the pinion shaft because it is having the torsional uh, load and so uh, we will have the torque over here so on the shaft p which will be transmitted to the shaft A through this pinion and uh, crown gear. So this is fixed to the wheels uh, uh, which are fixed to the ground. So when the turning shaft uh, P turns, the pinion will uh, roll. The pinion will uh, roll around the crown wheel C. So around the crown wheel uh, G, it will roll. Thus, uh, if the road wheels are fixed, uh, the propeller shaft is turning condition. Road wheels are in fixed, uh, propeller shaft in uh, turning condition. The pinion will uh, tend to climb around the your crown. So, what will happen? This is fixed in condition. This is in rotating condition. So, what will happen? This will try to climb around this uh, wheel. As the axle casing is supports pinion, as the whatever the axle is there that uh, supports pinion also, it will subject it to the force. So force will come into picture that cause to rotate and uh, torque producing this action, the torque produced by this action is equal to and opposite to the driving torque which is applied to the road wheel. So whatever the torque is applied that will be exactly opposite to the whatever the torque produced during the driving so applied on the road so this torque and this torque in opposite direction so torque reaction take place which will uh, tends to turn in opposite direction to the rotation of the road so this uh, opposed uh, direction of uh, torque which will causes heavy bending so this can be avoided so torque reaction already it is take place because uh, two side one side torque will be produced one side driving torque which will be in the opposite direction so hence uh, there will be a uh, heavy bending may take place so this can be avoided by attaching a one arm or one suspension over here in the rear axle casing so this will uh, what will uh, this will absorb that uh, load and so uh, there won't be a bending action will be won't be there on the axle. So this is called as one kind of force that is called as torque reaction, torque reaction force. Next one will be the uh, uh, force will be the driving thrust. So driving torque produced in the engine causes the thrust to be produced on the road wheel. So which has to be transmitted from the axle casing to the chassis frame. So driving torque uh, is whatever the torque is produced by the wheel, it has to go to the body of the wheel. So to this uh, uh, thrust force member or uh, radius ropes are used. So these members are uh, attached to the axle casing or chassis frame or uh, in the longitudinal direction. Again, that uh, spring type of uh, we can use the, uh, so that uh, it will absorb that uh, driving thrust load also. And third one is the weight of the body. So on the entire weight, all those things it will lies on the wheels. Wheels means it is lies on your rear axle. Remember entire weight of the body means entire weight of the, your uh, vehicle that will lies on your rear axle. So 
that uh, load also we have to take care while uh, because uh, this will act as a simple support for this uh, axle wheels will act as two side wheel will act as a simple support and uh, loads will be placed uh, in the two or three directions so that entire load will be acting on this shaft and wheels will be provide a supporting reaction so that force also we have to consider next uh, sideways force or uh, we will call it as side thrust so rear axle also experience uh, this uh, side forces or pulling force due to side load on the vehicle especially whenever you take the turning condition it may uh, force this uh, the sideways force on this uh, rear axle so that also it has to take care so whenever you are talking about rear axle four loads so or uh, torques we have to take care one is the torque reaction the opposite torque produced between this pinion shaft and the driving shaft so that torque reaction we have to take care then we have to take care driving thrust next weight of the body then side force so these are the four things we have to take care so with respect to this uh, four things whatever you are talked weight of the body torque reaction driving thrust side force so based upon this uh, we have the different arrangement for the drives uh, to the wheels so how we can uh, arrange these drives so we can arrange this drive in a uh, four ways so we will see how in which way we can do the drives so one is spring acts as a torque member thrust member and transmit the sideways force so only spring to the spring all the three members so that is torque members thrust member and transmit the sideways force so that will take care second one we can use a spring acts as a thrust member and transmit member for sideways force so, but a separate torque member for torque reaction we can use so in this way we can make the driving system and third way the spring transmit only sideway force so spring may use for uh, transmit the sideway force and uh, but torque and uh, driving member we can take on by the several uh, other ways separate members uh, we can use and fourth way is the spring takes uh, only the weight of the body spring may take only weight of the body and uh, torque member driving thrust and sideways force are uh, taken by separate member so based upon this four condition we have uh, so many arrangements of drives uh, so many drives are used but out of this so two very important drives are uh, one is uh, ochkis drive and uh, one more is the torque tip drive so based upon this condition so in this uh, condition any one condition we can use so ochkis drive or uh, torque tip drive so in this condition spring takes the weight of the body remember now we will move on to the arch kiss drive so arch kiss drive so which are widely used uh, in the system so in this arrangement uh, uh, what will happen springs uh, takes the weight of the body and also it will take cares about uh, torque reaction driving thrust and side force so entirely this spring especially the leaf spring we will we can see in the heavy load so this leaf spring will take place that uh, entire body weight also the torque reaction that is the opposite torque created by the wheel as well as spin shaft that reaction it will take and also the driving thrust as well as side force side force is uh, whenever the turning takes place uh, side force exerted on the rear axle so that also it taken care by this uh, spring force and uh, propeller shaft uh, whenever this uh, used uh, spring force are used uh, we have to use the two, two propeller uh, propeller shaft with the two universal joint and a sliding joint uh, which is as shown in the figure we will go directly go to the Uh, figure so we can see over here this is the frame so from this is the frame and this is the spring spring 
it is uh, button over here through the center O2 and uh, over here it is shackled so that uh, you can move up and down over here depending upon the up and down moment uh, as uh, provided by the road condition so this is fixed to O2 but uh, this end it is not shackled so so that you can uh, move towards up and uh, down this spring is uh, connected to the rear axle casings through the bolt next uh, from the rear axle casing uh, this one will be the wheel and we will have the bevel pinion shaft from the bevel pinion shaft it is going to the universal joint from the universal joint to the propeller shaft from the propeller shaft to the sliding joint from the sliding joint one more universal joint is there from the universal joint it is going to the transmission shaft transmission shaft to the transmission box so in this way your uh, Ochkis drive will have the so many component okay so we can see that uh, axial casing uh, so whatever you have talked about uh, axial casing uh, cannot turn under the torque radius so this axial casing cannot turn under the torque reaction so which causes uh, spring to flex down so which is shown over here so springs will take care whenever that opposite uh, torque is provided by the wheel so that uh, transfer to the spring wheels rather than to the rear axle casing so it is connected to the rear axle bolt but it is directly go to the torque arm of the or uh, spring arm leaf spring arm so that it will take care about that torque reaction so this spring will uh, provide a resistance because one end it is fixed one end we have the shackling end so that it will move up and down so it provide a flexible or considerable resistance uh, for the deformation because of one end is uh, free over here so hence uh, torque reaction can be take, uh, taken care by this uh, spring element okay under this condition uh, axis of the bevel bevel pinion shaft uh, what you will call um, bevel pinion shaft will not pass through the center point uh, of the inversal joint therefore uh, we required a uh, uh, inversal joint over here so hence we are using the two inversal joint otherwise what will happen there will be a bending stress over the propeller shaft uh, if we, if it is not there okay so we provided two universal joint over here whenever uh, rear axle moves up and down in a circle okay so because of road condition the front spring supports to the frame so here at o2 it is proposed to the support to the frame and uh, propeller shaft whatever it moves about the center point o1 that is a uh, center point of the front universal joint since these two members o1 and o2 that do, uh, does not coincide with each other and distance between the front universal joint and the pinion shaft axial will be altered during the up and down motion so there will be a alteration in the during up and down motion depending upon the road condition so this will accommodate by the sliding joint for this reason we need this uh, sliding joint so to use the properly propeller shaft or else uh, while moving up and down there will be a lot of problem will be created so in this way this uh, your uh, arch kiss drive will uh, work next we have the top tube drive So top tube drive. So in this uh, directive, we go to the uh, figure. So in this uh, top tube drive, spring takes only body weight and uh, side thrust. So spring is uh, taking only body weight and uh, side thrust. And uh, one more top tube is provided over the uh, propeller shaft uh, that take us about uh, torque reaction and driving thrust so this torque tube which is called another member so that will uh, take us about uh, torque reaction as well as uh, 
driving test. These top tips are made up of tubular kind of things, usually which will surround your propeller shaft. One of end of the top tube is uh, attached to the axial casing. One end is uh, attached to the axial casing, so which can you can see over the figure. And other end is uh, made up of a spherical cup kind of things, uh, which will fit uh, in the frame as shown in the figure. So we can see as torque tip takes a torque reaction. So the axis of a bevel pinion shaft. So whatever the bevel pinion shaft is there will not change and always pass through the this uh, central spherical cup so axis won't change over here whenever the torque reaction takes place and it is always going to the spherical cup so what will happen if the universal joint connecting between the propeller shaft and transmission shaft exactly located at, at the center of this cup so universal joint as well as uh, your uh, propeller shaft if it is exactly coincided with spherical, uh, spherical cup shape this uh, thing then this uh, torque will be transmitted to this uh, spherical cup for ends and so your torque to reaction will be take care by this uh, spherical cup so we can see over here torque tube and you have the universal joint uh, and a propeller shaft so spherical cup thing will be made so this spherical cup uh, thing will take care that uh, torque tube uh, reaction or opposite torque uh, happened at the rear axle so this can be taken care by this uh, torque tube so this is how your torque tubular works okay and uh, we can see in the both the drives uh, torque tube as well as Hotchkiss uh, the leaf spring uh, whatever the spring you are told that will take care about uh, side rust in the both the cases uh, when coil springs are used uh, they are not able to used to take uh, side loss so, so leaf spring can only can take the side loss but whenever you use uh, uh, coil type of spring uh, then it won't take uh, side uh, loads so therefore again we have to use a separate member in that case we will call a panard rod that is used for side thrust okay so remember your leaf spring it will take care about a side thrust so this is how your torque tubular works so differential is exactly one device where it will convert a right angle transmission of power one thing and one more thing it uh, gives uh, appropriate speed to the wheels so for example whenever you see whenever you taking the turn whenever you taking the turn the outer wheel should have to cover more distance whereas inner wheel has to cover lesser distance because of lesser radius from the center of the screw so what will happen when it has to cover more distance we have to give the more speed means this wheel should operate at more speed than this speed so speed given means power given to this wheel should be more compared to this wheel so differential main function is to transmit the power to the wheels as and when required so whenever the outer wheel if it is required more power it has to transfer more power to the outer wheel when compared to the inner wheel so that is the main function of your uh, differential where you are going to use so let us uh, go to the uh, component of this uh, differential so it will uh, consist of uh, drive pinion and or bevel pinion drive pinion or bevel pinion it uh, we will uh, call it as bevel pinion so attached to the propeller shaft from the propeller shaft or universal joint it is coming over here and uh, then it is bevel pinion, pinion it is going to the crown wheel so crown wheel is over here from the crown wheel it is going to the cage so in the cage we have the cross pin over here the cross pin is uh, again it is connected to the pinion gear so over here pinion gear so from the pinion gear it is going to the side gear or sun gear so sun gear we are having the two shaft one 
half shaft remember two half shaft so this two half shaft will be in the same line so this half shaft will be to this wheel and this half shaft will be for the another wheel so this is how your uh, parts consist of in your uh, differential whenever the vehicle is going straight so whenever going is straight this uh, ground wheel will uh, turns uh, cage so power will be transmitted from the bevel pinion then it is going to the crown wheel so from crown wheel also rotates so this cage also will uh, rotates so cage will rotate your pinion gear so equally it will rotate pinion gear and that pinion gear will uh, transfer to the side gear from the side gear it is uh, going to your uh, shaft equally it will transmit because there is no variation in the turn or no variation in the side so whenever you are taking a turn whenever you are taking the turn so what will happen whenever you are taking the turn what will happen just listen the cage continuously has to rotate cage continuously will rotate and it will pulls this uh, pinion gear uh, so it will uh, because uh, if you taking the right turn what will happen it will uh, pulls this the uh, pinion so that it will move downwards or uh, the power will be transmitted to this uh, wheel will be more for example if you are taking the right side turn means uh, outer side wheel will be this one so what will happen so it will tries to pull this uh, pinion gear and the uh, pinion gears will move downwards that means uh, it will more act on this uh, wheel and uh, the most of the power will be transmitted to this uh, wheel because of the pulling action taking place between the pinion gear and the cage and so uh, we are transmitting the more power to this uh, sun gear so sun gear will be transmitted to the wheel uh, and less power will be transmitted to this uh, side sun gear and uh, it is going to this uh, wheel so in this way you are can work so we can see briefly on the another diagram how exactly it will work so see over here whenever it is a straight condition this differential or uh, whatever you are calling pinion gear pinion gear which is there in your cage so cage shaft or cross pin shaft will be there so whenever it is straight so it it transmits the power uh, equally to this one so there won't be any loss in the power I means uh, equally transmission of power will be there for the both the shaft and so both the wheel gear will get the equal shaft so both the speed will rotate at the same speed this is how whenever it is a straight turn whenever you are taking the right side turn right side see for example right side so what will happen this cage will in the last diagram you just check cage will push us this pinion so cage whenever it is pushes the pinion it will move so uh, uh, in a direction so that it will transmit or it will rotate power to this side this side see because you are rotating on the right side turn so right side means it is uh, giving the power to more power to this uh, sun gear or slide gear and hence uh, this sharp power will get some uh, more power and uh, speed of this wheel will be more and this uh, slide gear or uh, shaft will be having uh, achieved the less uh, power and speed will be reduced for this wheel and so it is achieving the power distribution whenever the turning takes place this is the main function of your uh, differential got it so this is how we are exactly your so again we can see the power transmission line propeller shaft bevel pinion then your crown pinion from the crown pinion it is going to the cage cage to your again pinion gear pinion gear to sun gear or slide gear and to the wheels half shaft half shaft so in this way whenever it is a straight but whenever it is a uh, your uh, turning take place now we are taking the right side turn so it is power will be more transmitted to this uh, half shaft see how it is going to the power line so this is how your uh, transmission of power will be there to the more to the left wheel whenever you are taking to the right track so this is how right turn so this is how power distribution given by the differential to the wheels so this is the working of our differential so in this way we are completed entire transmission part
anti-transmission part. Now another unit of this uh, model will be the brakes system. So next class we will uh, talk about brakes. So then we will complete this uh, model.